Well, unlike so many people, I'm quietly and slowly going around the twist. <laughs> with lockdown. I mean, I get fed up with it. Do you know how bad it is? I'm actually enjoying editing and watching my old films. Guys, I'm here to save you. I'm going to put three films up, one after the other. Hopefully it will pass some time for you and show you a few fishing tips as well. The first one, yes, beautiful west coast of Ireland with a tiny little hundred pound camera. A little tiny little baby thing goes in your pocket. Guys, headphones, <laughs> don't shout at me. It's pretty crap sound, but it's something for you to watch. There's some tips there and it's a good interview with Paul Harris from the Bearer Peninsula. He's now moved to lands of Rutty out the Canary Islands and I'm sure he's luxuriating in the lovely sunshine out there. Anyway, sit back, enjoy a few tips on shore fishing for Pollock. <laughs> I saw it come up here at the bottom of my eyes. I thought, do I look at that or keep film? Just film, get washed away later. Very slow and steady and Well, it's hard to believe we've had to move three different times now looking at rock marks because they're so dangerous and so slippery you can't really see it here but this black rock behind me all this black stuff is really really slippery when it gets rainy so we've managed to come down here at the end of a headland and we are at least fishing so there's a, there's a small one we just picked up you can look at the colours on it you see it's been living right down in the kelp and the weed and everything I lost the one about four or five pound about half an hour ago just trying to swing it up out of the weeds i think graham's had a good one just up to my left uh, horrible conditions really breezy this is a new place never fished here before so we thought we'd give it a try and you see even in the worst of weather the old uh, rubber eels and everything do their job you can see they're just picking up and sucking straight off the rocks i'm going to try and hold this one it took a lead headed jig, one of the storm heads here that Paul was showing us earlier with a rubber tail. Hey, I don't think you're going to see this, I'm trying to film with a handy can. Hey, I'm over there. I might try and balance in the minute. I spent the winds held, I can't help that, that's all we've got. A nice big pollock. If I can balance this camera here, hopefully you get a better look at it. But on a rock platform, where do you balance cameras? Let's have a go at it. Let's have a go at it. Might drop in a puddle there. Gonna take a risk, people, and pick this fish up. Oh, I don't know if you're gonna even gonna see it, you probably won't even hear me. Beautiful, beautiful rock pollock there. Just look at the colours on this one. Absolutely fabulous colours along it. It's a big fish, it's about eight pounds. And what a fight getting it out of the kelp.
Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show where we are in Sunny Island. Hmm, okay, it's not very sunny today. It's windy, it's grey, it's cloudy, it's drizzly, but it is island. Now today we're going to be talking about lure fishing for pollock. That's artificial lures. No bait allowed, it's banned. I'm over here with the Bearer Peninsula's top shore guide, Paul Harris. We're going to be talking tackle, we're going to be talking real lightweight rods for pollock fishing really really good sport over here a box like this is all you need of assorted lures different types of lures obviously well let's face it most of the lures catch more anglers than they do catch fish but we're going to try and get out later this afternoon and actually catch some pollock now shore fishing for pollock is very very good it's great fun it's good sport you're out in the open air but more important from my point of view being a cameraman I don't like carrying lots of equipment as well as a camera equipment. And to be honest, look, this, a box of lures, a nice lightweight rod and reel, that's all you need to go pilot fishing, even if you're on holiday, you're on vacation, you don't need a lot of gear, and I'll tell you what, some cracking sport. So, into Paul's nice warm conservatory, at least the rain stopped, there's something, and let's see Paul's opinion on some of the better lure, you know, lures and rigs, outfits, and listen, this is most important, techniques of catching Pollock from the rocks in deep water. He's good at it. Let's hear some of his tips. Come on. Well, Paul, it's good to be back, mate. Good to see you again, Graham. Yeah. Back here again. Many, many years ago we met Paul and I fishing. I can't tell you how many bream we caught. Probably be banned now if we went bream fishing. But anyway, we're, we're going to be going Pollock fishing now, Paul. You've got a vast array of lures, tackle. And obviously you do a lot of this pollock fishing. I know you like pollock fishing, it's good fun. I like pollock fishing as well, you like tackle. Hmm. Um, uh, as I was telling the uh, YouTubers, you guys out there just now, I was telling you travelling light. It was a bit alien to me travelling light with all the camera equipment, but it doesn't look like we're travelling light. Paul's not travelling light with this lot. And you have to have as many lures as you can. It's just part of the tackle talk that goes with fishing. But some lures work, some don't. Most of these we all think work, don't we, Paul? <laughs> all on the day. All now, on the day. for Pollock, just give us a brief insight into rods and reels that people could go if they're on vacation, if they're on holiday. What sort of outfit can they use just to go spinning for Pollock off the rocks? Well, if you're if you're a normal sort of sea angler, you'll have a spinning rod of some kind. You don't need a heavy, clunky rod. We're getting away from this in sea angling now. We're getting away from these big, heavy rods sort of things. Um, the, the, the sort of LRF rods have brought in a bit of a revolution really to, to our fishing. So you can fish with the nice little light rods yep. up to about, should we say, sort of a, a pike fishing rod, something like that if you're a coarse fisherman. If you've got a pike rod, fine, take that with you. Sort of pound and a half test curve in, in old money sort of thing. That's, yep. that's more or less what we'd use. It really, the rod relates to the weight that you're going to cast out. Um, obviously, if you, if you want to cast out a two ounce lead, you can't use a little light rod that's, that's rated to sort of an ounce. And lure. wind, and wind. You're on the ocean and here. You're wind. right on the Atlantic. You've got to take into account the wind yeah. for casting. Wind and also depth, because depth is also going to see, sort of say what sort of weight you're going to use on the end. Yeah. It's no good putting a half ground weight on if you're fishing in thirty foot of water. You're going to be spending most of your holiday waiting for it to sink before it so gets to the bottom. Basically, what you're saying you're not in the kill zone where those pollock are. Pollock live deep. They live generally deep. They live in the kelp. They live in all the sort of hard to get at places. It's the old the old story. If you're not losing the odd lure, you're not fishing in the right place. That's why you need plenty of lures. You need plenty of lures, but they're cheap. Yeah. That's the good thing. You, you see, you know, you, you could go out and buy these these sort of uh, you know really lovely plugs. You know, the, the hard plastic plugs. They're great. They catch lots of fish. I mean, you know, these things. They're about sort of 12, 15 pound each. Great. They catch wonderful bass and everything like that. But you don't need them for pollock. Yes, yes. And you don't want to put them where the pollock are, which is right down with the kelp beds. And you, it breaks your heart if you lose them. So what we're talking about is these sort of things. Back to our use, really, here, Graham. The old sort of Eddystone eel type. Yeah, red gills. Yeah, red gills. Artificial sandals, isn't it? Artificial sandals. And, and probably, I mean, nowadays, you've you really got these fabulous sort of glitter eels and that, which, which you know, really flash and everything on them, and it lies and everything. This is what the pollock eats. Yes. At the end, if we were trout fishing, we'd say match the hatch. Right, we're, we're matching what the pollock eats. Um, as illogical as it may I caught a pollock last year about yeah. sort of near enough nine pound, um, which, which died. Now, I put 95% of my pollock back, and this one just for some reason died. I caught it on this little yeah. eel. 
And when I brought it home and opened it up, because I was going to eat it, not waste it, yeah. I opened it up and out fell a herring. That big. Yeah, really. a so whole, like a big bite. Yeah, a whole perfect herring and there were sort of half digested herrings in it, yet it took a little yeah. bit of rubber. So the, the, the food instinct is still there with them. But we've had days when we've caught 20, 30 pollock on one of these. As many as that, really? Yeah, and, and we're having a great time. Yeah. Um, and we say, oh no, are they just eating these? Let's try something different. Let's try the old fire tail, the great yes. favourite for, for pollock fishing. Oh, I've got some of those, yeah. And all of a sudden, no, we can't catch. And we've had like 20 casts and we've caught probably one fish. And we put one of these back on, boom, we catch fish. Yeah. Another day, it would be the complete reverse. We'd be catching on this, yeah. but we couldn't catch on this. The important thing with pollock fishing, chop and change. Just because you're not catching doesn't yeah. mean there's no pollock there or your lure isn't sort of working properly. It can be that they're just not feeding on that particular colour. They do respond to colour. You know, we have all these red-headed ones, we have green ones. Now, you mentioned uh, another year I came with you, I remember. Uh, you were talking about in the springtime, the fish react differently, the pollock are deeper. Sometimes they'll actually take a fish bait on the bottom. And, uh, mm. Why is it? Is it, is it that the prey fish or something aren't about, you know, that uh, they okay. have to adapt their feeding? They're hungry. Fish eat, fish have to eat to live, sort of like we all do, but they're hungry. So we often find that certainly sort of April time, May, before the sand deal are really coming in great numbers and the pollock have come in looking for them, not so much food about, so we've put our bottom bait down, our piece of mackerel or our frozen sand deal down for a horse or a ray or something, and all of a sudden the red will be taking off and screaming and we've got six pound of pollock on the end. Um, but I tell you what, six pound, seven pound pollock. Wow, that's a lot, lot of fun. A lot of sport, a lot of fun. And and you know we were saying fishing deep down, fishing amongst the kelp. If you do hook up on the bottom and you do get snagged and you give it a pull and you lose it, you've lost fifty p. A hook and a piece of rubber. That's all yeah, there is. That's yeah. all you've yeah. lost. And within seconds you can re rig, cast out again, and there. But if you if you say if you if you're not losing some, you're not fishing in the right place. It proved worth the change. We moved around from the other side because it was getting a bit rough. And very quickly, we're finding some nice fish. We actually need the tide to come in a bit more because we've been landing that not long enough. <laughs> Get in there. Come on. Come on, fish. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a longer landing net or only fish at high tide. Oh, there we go. That's a nice fish. That's a nice stab of pollock. Great big mouth. It takes a little plastic lure. Look at that. Hey. Get him out of there. Look at that for a lovely... That's a chunk of pollock. ...looking fish. There we go. Have you got the hook gone through and hooked the net somehow? Oh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There he is. Beautiful gold colour yeah. to it. And if you wonder why they take little lures, look at that mouth, eh? That's a beauty, Paul. Nice fish, so. Put him, a... put him back, keep him for tea, what do you do? Oh, this one will go back to put the thing, back, really, yeah. yeah. Lovely yeah. looking fish. Just pop the hook out of him. Now that's a boy called a boat-sized pollock. Well, I certainly do enjoy the freedom that you get. With the wind blasting in your face. Hey, come on, it is Ireland. Fantastic fishing over there. Anybody who goes shore fishing in Ireland will doubtless back me up on that. Just great to get a box of lures, a spinner rod, phew, off the rocks, work away, catch and fish. So, how about a few more fishing tips? Yes, sea fishing again, boat fishing for conger. There's a tip on how to make a boom you don't have to buy. Yes, that's right, free. There wouldn't be anything else with me, would there? Sit back and enjoy. So all this could actually work in our favour as far as sound goes, sound monitors, because yeah, it's a controlled environment. I've got, I'm in this wooded valley, so although the wind is blowing, I would have wind tomorrow, wind problems. Now, if I go and try and catch a big conger tomorrow, or a decent sized conger for you guys, you will no doubt have seen these running ledger booms. 
Now they're mini booms, okay, like that. They're just very small. Now if you've got a strong tidal flow, which I've got up around the Isle of Wight area where I normally would fish, then as you lower them down, they go down like this and away with your trace and your bait, okay? So the current will stretch it out. So as you lower down, it won't spin up, provided you let it down slowly. And then deep water, 80, 90, 100 meters, I might be fishing tomorrow, I don't know. Um, those two are gonna converge because there's not much tide down here. It's not gonna stretch the trace and the bait away from the main line like, as you lower it down like this. Chance that it could spin up. So you want a longer boom. But I haven't brought any with me, have I? Is there anything I can adapt? Oh yes, oh yes, so there is. No, it's not the jacket. It is indeed the coat hanger. Stolen from many hotels around the world, these can make you nice long booms for deep water fishing, stuff like conger, ling, pollock, that don't tangle. I'm gonna show you how to knock one up quickly. Hope you people are going to see this. I've got a nice white coming out there, so it should stand out. While well, we've got enough light before it gets too dark. I could use my shark release wire cutters. I cut up here. I rotate a couple of times before I really pop it. Just to fatigue it. I don't want to ruin these cutters. They're quite, quite nice cutters. Then I take out my hip pliers. I've got cutters in there. I can take my long nose pliers like this. I hope you guys are seeing all this. I just like to get it straight first. So I'm holding it and bending it. Now what I'm going to do, now we've done one on this on booms. I've definitely done one. So look up in the playlist, but here, you know, you can watch this as well. You can look on the playlist, how to make different booms. It's in there somewhere. 700 films, I can't remember what I've made, but I've definitely made one. Take the end about just in from the nose there, because you don't want to make a big loop. Ooh, I'm going to roll this around. Just like this, just literally, you can see the size of it. Hopefully you can see the size. Now, yeah, my fingers are slippery. You strip off the paint off this one. So I've got two bits there. Let's peel that bit of paint off that easy to see. You've got two bits there, then I, I hold it deep in the throat, right? Like that. So I've got good grip and then I bend it. Right angles like this. These are slippery, these are man. God knows what on them. Fish oil probably, and rust. Look at the rust coming, that's terrible on it. So I want that boom to be about there. So, look, there's my initial one that I've been using up, up the other end of the coast where there's tide. Now there's less tide, I want at least that so when it drops down it doesn't tangle. So I'm gonna make another loop just here. These are so easy, you can knock these up providing you've got a lot of coat hangers. I roll it around like that, so you got it like this, and then I bend it. So this, hold that just there. I need bigger pliers, really. So this loop crosses over the other one. Watch, like that. So if you're looking down it, you see the line goes through here and here. Now you've got to tie the weight on the end here. So I'm going to bend about there, a little kink in it. So please, I decided to do this in here. And then you're gonna put a cut, but you want it to come underneath that loop, if that makes sense. It's gonna be lower than that loop. Just pinch it, rotate, snip. Then it closes up like that. Now you can do two things here. You can either take your lead, keep a pair of pliers around. You can do it by hand, so if you've got a thin one, slide your lead over like this. Now, obviously you think it's gonna slide off? No, just squeeze those together, job done. So it's gonna look like this. You've got your running boom here. Now look how that lines up. Got my lead here. I've got here an egg sinker, but you can put a plastic bead there so that, that if you had a small swivel, it might jam in there. I've got a big swivel here, doesn't matter, but I'll put this little, you know, this uh, lead bead on to show you. And there's my trace, you see that back there, culminated my hook. So when you drop down like this, it will actually look, so it's three or four inches apart as it goes down through the water like this. Hits a seabed, lays like that, and your trace will be down here, your bait will be up there, 
everything it won't be look i'll show you i'm going to do it so i'll show you what it looks like that's no good that's no good guys because when the fish that's on the bottom when the fish takes he's going to have to lug that lead along the seabed because it's tangled here so you want that look like that see how it's spun out if i spin it out i'm just going to show you for beginners experts look away now I'm not interested in experts there's just loads of them out there so if i have that like this you'll show the beam boom works if i pick it up watch the lead bang it untangles immediately or if you're fishing very rough ground see it's easy to change the lead like this look just bend it back that goes off put a smaller lead on or you can tie a piece of fishing line on there what i do is i tie a knot in it i'm using 50 here but if you were fishing a snaggy ground you'd be using 15 pound main line and a weaker link to the lead so this would be say 20 if you like i'm just doing this to show you so i'm hoping it will stand out in low light levels just a sliding knot there like that then you just close the loop up like this again okay. we've definitely got a film up on making these things i was just hoping you can you can so i will be using this type of thing and then about three or four inches down there and just overhand loop a couple of times with say a weaker link so it breaks out if you don't have a weaker link and you just have, don't you just have say 50 pound line if you get one of your knives like this and just gently just gently scrape away at that you'll make a little shaving off it and that will be enough that if it does snag in the bottom this won't this is a terribly blunt knife don't know what i use it for peeling bananas or something so that shave back that would then this one probably won't it does it just snaps so you'd lose your lead but you get your fish and your rig back if that makes sense you get the whole lot that stands on there and then of course you just tie another lead on or just open it up and clip another lead on so easy to change obviously you won't buy these in a tackle shop you have to make them yourself out of yes coat hanger wire so I've managed to put a grapnel anchor down. I'm just waiting to see if it's settled. So I've got one mark. I've got showing marks of rocks over there. I've got one in line with the other. I just hope I'm not dragging. I think I've got the last of the ebb. I'm going to try and catch you guys. Yeah, just something different. Conga eel. But there's some real, real big ones in here. There's chances of 40 pounders, you know. These are just reef. It's not a wreck. It's just ordinary rough ground. Very rough ground. So I've got to lose some gear. Let's get cracking. I'm going to see if I can uh, catch you guys at least one conga. Fingers crossed. You know here at the Totally Awesome, we don't ask for a lot. We really don't ask for a lot. We'll show you a few rigs. If we can catch a fish on that rig, job done. Right. Don't go away while I rig up. Here's my rig with the boom from the coat hanger wire, a roll of scrap lead, a leftover manky mackerel, and I'm just going to lob it back in this last of this tide run normally i've done okay here on the ebb but i've really got it wrong on my tides yet again very very rocky and low with these longer booms you can as i describe you can let them down a little bit faster i am in he says look and i'm in about 25 meters of water and that you can see all that swirly stuff there that's all reefs and god knows what else that's here over there is a tide rip where they go bass in, commercial bass guys, tide, fish on that tide race over there. Now, am I on the bottom or not? Somebody tell me. I do not like moving it too much here. For congress, you want to pick it up, put it down, and it's on the bottom, and that's it. The more you move it, the more chance you're going to get of getting in a snag. Right, rod number two. And of course, fishing wouldn't be fishing if you didn't get the occasional Whoa! big dogfish. It's halfway through my spaghetti bolognese, then. Eh? Real bang. 
Didn't seem like a small fish tug to me. Maybe well. This feels like Snake City. It's a big bait though. Got him up, mate. Got him out the snake. He might ping off, he might ping off, the last one came off. That's the downside of using braid, there's no stretch in it. Not a huge fish, just a regular reef or rough ground conga. Look pretty stupid if it's a ling, wouldn't I? It's not, it's a conga, I'd say. Well, no. Tell by the fight. Oh. The other head cam gave up as well, guys. Oh, nice fish, yeah. Nice fish. They like that whiting, didn't they? Spinning. To you in a minute, people. You'll have to wait. Yes, sir. He might ping off. There he is. There we go. Nice fish, people. Pleased with that one. Listen, three conger eels can't be bad. Another one lost as well. I'm going to give it about 15 minutes. A bit more grub, cup of tea. And I think you've seen that the old booms do work. Get yourself out in your boat and try and get a few of these kiddies. A lot of people don't like catching them because you can't eat them. You can, well, you can eat them, but there's better fish than these for sure. Let's get him unhooked and get him back. Now, if you did want to save yourself a bit of grief and aggravation, get yourself a tennis ball. Put a cross cut in it like this, this way and that way, so it pushes in. You can jam that over the end of your rod butt like that, and that way you don't get any painful bruises around the delicate areas. So you can move it around from hip to hip, pulls off, pulls on, easy, comfortable, stops that gimbal, this thing, the cross gimbals, digging into you. Bite that fish, give it some pressure and use, no, not some fancy belt, tennis ball with a split. Totally awesome tip. Fish on the corner one, boys. <laughs> Be nice to get one more, wouldn't it? I think he's still there. Oh, this is the one! This is the one! Come out! This is the one! Get out! Oh, this is the kitty! This is the one! This is it! This is oh! He's gonna get in the rock, I'm done! It's the one I've been waiting for. I've got my tea down there. I don't mind if I kick it over if I can see him. Good sized fish. It's spinning and twanging away down there. They rotate at high speed. I fear the tea's going over. Oh, people want to Why not go conga fishing? They pull back. Oh, Jesus. That's how easy it is to go over the side on your own. Not a man alone in a boat. A boat. <laughs> oh, oh no. Whoa, what? That's a bit better. I've got to unroll it first. Here we go, watch out. Oh. It's flipped me there. I'm going to have to chin gaff this one, guys. I'll get anywhere, anywhere near it. What a cracker. Yeah. Oh, hastily moving my tea out of the way. If this kitty comes aboard. It's got to be a chain gaff on it. For sure. Why put it away, Graham? Why put it away? I thought it was a black one. It's been living here for ages. I'm just trying to... Alter this a bit for you, just give you an angle on it. Hang on guys. Where's that angle? 
I think you'll see him there. I'm hoping. Now, guys, just bear with me, won't you? Just bear with me. Wow. Oh, he's bit my boat. Oh, what? <laughs> Stop it, Presti. Back that drag off, Gwen. There's three fish. Ow! Good. Three fish on the same whiting head. Yeah. That. Oh, it's still coming. Still coming. Still coming. Don't tell me that's not a nice eel. And it's out of battery. New battery pack. It says new battery pack. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Totally awesome fishing show. I've got to say it quickly. <laughs> that is an absolute lump, is it not? I don't even know if I'm recording. It's just flashing up. New battery pack. Beautiful. Oh, I could get him unhooked. And that's it. Off home. Oh, good trip. There he is, boys. Big old George. Just got on a release gaff. Check out the size of him. I hope he doesn't lash the camera and take it over the side. Let's release him and off. There he goes. Beautiful. And this is mine. I'm feeding as well, look. Cinnamon and a cup of tea nearly knocked over with the gas there. We'll see you next time for another episode of Foolish Man Alone on a Boat at Night, Underwater, In the Water, Over the Water, Wherever, or well, Not Under the Water. See you next time, guys. Now then, always nice to catch a few conga, and of course, you can make yourself a few free booms from the coat hanger wire. Look, people, make them whatever size you want. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that one. I thought I'd enjoy this one. I'm not sure I will, though. It's my son catching some halfway decent fish. Pike fishing on lures in Finland. Didn't even invite me. fish of the day, first spot, uh, we're fishing a quite deep edge here, it's 3-4 meters, uh, slowly retrieve on the pig shed, yeah, very nice, the fish was very lazy, it has been blowing very hard and, and uh, it's cold in the water, so I think we need to fish really slowly to trick them today, it's a nice fish Mika, yep. perfect! Must be here. It's warmer water.
Hello and welcome. I'm here with Mika Mäkele from uh, Tampereen Kalastusvällene and we are in Finland and fishing in the archipelago, somewhere in the archipelago in Finland. Um, last day it was storm here and uh, the water is really cold now and the fish is really tricky. But uh, we are not here for the numbers, we are here to, to maybe catch a really beautiful big fish because they're swimming in this water. Uh, so far we have one fish in the boat. It's a, a female about six kilo and uh, we have some bites but it's really really tricky. We try to fish uh, quite deep and uh, now we, we actually fish shallow but, but uh, we have tried to fish uh, quite deep this uh, this morning uh, and hopefully they start to bite thing in the afternoon uh, we have just uh, talked with other boats and uh, Johan from uh, Canal Gratis they have um, I think between 10 or 15 fishes but it's small ones they go in shallow with jerk bait busted jerk and so on and um, yeah We'll see what happened in the afternoon. Okay, good morning guys. Yesterday we struggled with fishing a little bit, not too many bikes and so on. We pull up the boat and trail a little bit here to different area. We're gonna do the same tactics. We're gonna go a little bit jerk bites on the shallow water, a little bit rubber on the deeper and try to get some bigger ones today. Okay, it looks like it's picking up a little bit wind and that's the really good thing because in the, on the springtime pike fishing you don't want to have totally calm water and sun is shining then they are really tricky to catch so hopefully it stays like this or even pick up a little bit more wind so that helps us a little bit. It's good. When I start fishing in the archipelago, in, in the Swedish archipelago, and I think it's the same here in Finland, uh, we have lots of nice pike fishing in the outer of archipelago. Fish around five to eight kilo was very common, and, and up to, if you're lucky, 12 kilo. Short, fat, with small heads, they're growing fast on small cods and, and big herrings. They are nearly gone now, so, now we, we, we go for the big ones in the inner archipelago, in these small narrow places when they feed on, on, on big breams and, and white fish and so on. So actually you have three steps in this wide archipelago with thousands of islands. The inner archipelago, the middle and the outer archipelago. And, and if you shall catch a big female pike today in Swedish or Finland, Finland uh, you must fish in the inner archipelago I think there you have the best chance today hopefully the cod is coming back maybe three four five years we have the cod back and and the fish start to grow in the outer uh, archipelago again we are in a small bay a spawning bay for pike and they have caught some some really big ones here and we need to fish quite shallow and for that we use a, a, a glider like Buster Jerk. This is a floating version. And that means when you fish it and stop it, it pops up to the surface. But if you take a, a power, power drop from, from Strike Pro, and uh, I'm gonna show you. Here you, are, you have di di different weights. If you take a two grammar like this, and uh, just put it in the belly, like this, in front of the of the hook, like this. Just a moment. You have a really strong glue here, and you just press it like that. Now, now you have a suspending version. I'm going to show you. Yeah. 
you see it's it's nearly suspending really really nice I don't know if I, I should we can do like this well folks it's definitely totally awesome this that's we reckon five kilo you reckon somewhere around there on the jerk bait my first ever pike on a jerk bait fat pike yeah big head to it but what a take as well they they hit that lure hard don't yeah. they they really that was good one well. really slam into it what a beauty look at the markings on this fish yeah and you see all the nice lices color it. dark yeah really dark lovely and, lovely yeah. markings big belly on it full of spawn probably yeah hunt spawn female but what a beauty We'll get a couple of photos, get it back. I think we'll be staying in this spot for a while. Absolutely. Awesome fish. So, first cast with the rubber. It has been like the, the, the gliders has been the best one, but I said that I have to try the rubber and first cast, bang! He's in. Uh, she's there. It's good. Like a 5-6 kilo or something, I think. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah. It's quite a decent one. So, here we are. Try a little bit with the rubber. Big shad, of course. And the coldy color, of course. And looks like it's working. Hopefully get a bigger one, next one. Because when the 10 plus fish coming, we must be ready. Okay. Yeah, it's good fishing. And this this fish was, I took it on four meter. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's a fat female, not so big, but it was a good hit. Really nice. My roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good head sex. Yeah. I think we haven't seen it yet. Ah, it's, a, it's a nice fish. Holy moly. Holy moly. Whoa. Ah. Ah, That's a fat one. That's Eight a good, good pike. Good pike. It's a fat lady. Is it? Yeah, it has taken it. Oh, every, every stinger. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Mika! <laughs> you see it? Yeah. It, it's uh, maybe uh, eight, uh, maybe nearly one kilo pike in, in, in this one. Down in the gut there. Uh, yeah, you see the back see the thing, tail. tail. And look at the belly on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the pike in its belly. Yeah. Okay, here we got a really fat one. With the rubber, of course, and I think it's a one kilo pike inside there. We can <laughs> even see the tail in the mouth. That's crazy. And still, she took it really hard for the rubber. I think they are biting at the moment. We just have to find them. They will bite. Oh, it's a lot of... Okay. 
Moment of truth. Eight kilo. Eight kilos. Uh, eight and seven ninety-five with the sack. Okay. Eight kilo. And so that means six point eight or something. Yeah. Well, there we go. Another awesome pike from Finland. We reckon this one spawned out because it's got a huge head, but much thinner. So they are definitely on the feed though, aren't they? Definitely on the feed. What a fish though. This is certainly totally awesome pike fishing. What a fish. On the, on the old pig shad. It's not so big one, but it's it was a good hit. No, now now it's it doesn't feel any big. Are you sure? <laughs> ah, it's a nice one. I see it. That's a nice fish. It's a long one. Yeah, it's Whoa! A long, but it's not it's not a fat, but it's uh... the length of it. head on it as well. It's nice fish. It's massive. Yeah, look at the head. Yeah, that's 110 or something. Yeah. Look at the uh, leeches and parasites here on its head. Yeah, it's many. <laughs> look at that. They're just like eating into, <laughs> eating into his brain. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Good. Nice one. <laughs> yes! 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 Another totally awesome pike. On the, is it Search and Destroy this one? Or Search and Annoy? There. Search and destroy McRubber. Yeah, McRubber, good lure. Cracking fish, they're going more bonkers now, these pike. Here we go. Well, how big do you reckon, Stefan? It's not huge, but to me it's big. Yeah, but they, we, they, they're really feeding now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are really going crazy. Yeah, let's put it back. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> no messing around with that one. 
gets in. Yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah, but we, we, I, I take You the... take it there. It's, it's a fatty one. Yeah, yeah, it's a big one. Oh, that's a crocodile. Wow, well, I think that was a bit cheeky. Diving off, catching all those big pike. My goodness me, they had some big fish. And did you see the size of the lures they were pitching and jerking around? A good bit of fun. I've used that buster jerk and one day I will reveal exactly what I caught on it. At the moment, I can't. Really, really, really big fish on it. Three in about an hour and a half. I've always kept it quiet. It's about three years ago. Oh my, oh my word, people will be shocked. I might reveal it one day. Anyway, thanks for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this one and the previous Wednesday one, if you've enjoyed the Friday one, don't forget I put one up Wednesday, another three films. There's three little clip films I've put up in, what, 72 hours? Six, no six, come on. Two threes, even I'll make that a six. I'll do it again, if you did enjoy this, hit the comments, let us know. I'll do my best to get you guys through this lockdown and get out there where we can all go fishing again. Fingers crossed. People, we'll see you in the next film.